What is going on guys, Brown here, welcome back to the F1 2020 career mode Here today for part 6 for the Spanish Grand Prix If you missed the last video, do make, to check, make sure to check that out before you see this one If you have been watching the series through and you want to see more And you do like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, it really does help me But into qualifying we go and I've got to be honest, I do have mixed feelings about the Circuit de Catalunya. It's a track that I do find kind of boring, but I have been quick around China. Our first lap puts us P9, but as we go into in the second run, you'll see we're down into P17. But we have found just under five tenths of a second there. Going through the Shikami, lose the back end a little bit there rounds the final corner across the line and we actually go backwards and we do start in P18 unfortunately but going back to the track it's a track I do kind of have mixed feelings at it's a track on F1 2019 I actually got two wins at so and it was on that career that I, I got my maiden and very first win at the Spanish Grand Prix. So let's get into it, shall we? It's going to be an interesting one. The Spanish one. Grand Prix has been a permanent fixture on the Formula One calendar for over 30 years now, and for good reason. Do you remember Michael Schumacher's absolute dominance here in that rain-soaked Grand Prix in 1996? That day he took his first ever victory for Ferrari and we've had many more iconic moments since. It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730 meter sprint down to turn one of this 2.9 mile racetrack. Overtaking is challenging through these 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high speed excitement to be found, including the flat out turn three and the terrifying blind right of turn nine. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Now, can I talk to you about Sebastian Vettel? That was a great win. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and it's Valtteri Bottas that completes the front row. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Max Verstappen, and Albon, Ricardo, Perez, Norris, and Lance Stroll, Kvyat, Gasly, Kimi Raikkonen, and Grosjean, Giovinazzi, Brown, Carlos Sainz, and Kevin Magnussen, Russell, Joe, Latifi and Esteban Ocon rounds off the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? So we do actually get promoted up two positions with Esteban Ocon and Carlos Sainz taking grid place penalties. We're going to be doing a, an easy one stop from the mediums onto the hard, but a bit more fuel in the car. And let's get into it, shall we? The five red lights come on, it will be Mercedes going hammer and tongue into turn one as the lights go out. We're underway in Spain. Everyone getting away well. Looks like there, it looks like Hamilton may have the edge on Bottas. Bottas, I think, is on the outside going down now. We're actually going to go around the outside of the house there and now maybe down the inside of the Alfa, of the Alfa Romeo as we go through turn three which is much much nicer this year we actually lost out to the Alfa Romeo but we're going to try and get him back here as we're going to go down the inside into turn four we've got the Alfa Romeo that is of Antonio Giovinazzi and now we're going to send it down the inside of Pig Gasly in the Alfa Tauri and look at Giovinazzi you just follow it follow this through Great move by the young Italian. Now we have Danny Kvyat up the road. And can we get that Alpha Tauri as well as we head through the kink at blind turn nine and down the what will be the second DRS zone? And we're gonna absolutely lick the stamp and send it Danny Rickstar down the inside of Daniel Kvyat. And we are up into P11. Up next is the racing point of large stroll but that racing point the pink mercedes was too quick for us two laps later we run a little bit wide there and it looks like kvyat may have a go at us here 
heading down the straight and he is goes to the inside of us there's actually contact there we are going to defend all the way around the outside Kvyat locks up a bit though and we do defend and that is a good move in the end a little bit kind of nervy when he did lock up but we got the job done in the end and that is all that matters but he's coming up back up our inside there through turns four we are going to have to defend to the outside heading down into turn five we're going to break later squeeze him out and Antonio Giovinazzi is going to follow us through again down the inside he goes off Daniel Kvyat now into turn eight turn seven turn eight and he's got the job done and has Antonio and well 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 played by the Italian we go a little bit wide there Giovinazzi now thinking about a move on us as we go through the final sector that they uh, have redone Codemasters this year on the F1 game and now rounds the final corner can we hang on to this P11 it's all gonna come down to this now heading down the straight here comes Antonio Giovinazzi down our inside we're gonna try and defend to the outside we do we then have the inside line Givenaz is keeping his foot in. He gets the inside line for turn three. We run a little bit wide there, and that is going to cost us. And Givenaz is past. Pete Gasly has got his teammate somewhere. Something's happened to Kvyat. He's also lost out to Carlos Sainz. There was contact there with Pete Gasly. Now through the chicane again. Science has got past Pete Gasly, and now he's on the back of us. And this is going to be a very very hard position to defend that McLaren is very very quick as he absolutely blitzes us into turn one I tried to defend to the outside but that was never going to happen Carlos Sainz got the Spanish ground behind him at his home Grand Prix and he does take that position Pete Gasly now though gonna have a go again into turns four we defend to the outside he's keeping his foot in though he squeezes right to, to the edge of the track but into turn five, we squeeze him out and we say, no, Pierre, you're going to have to sit behind us for another lap. He's going to have another go here with Gasly. He's going to go to the outside this time. We are going to defend to the inside, squeeze him out. Maybe a bit aggressive there, but if it keeps him behind us, I do not care. But it is kind of turning into, we're into P10. Those up front are making their first stops of the day. Now they round that, the flat corner into the DRS line. Pierre Gasly's got us here. And we're going to go late. And he comes across. We've hit the back of Pierre Gasly. We've spun him round. And he's blocking off half the track there. Yeah, everyone behind him. The safety car has been deployed. And what has happened there? I don't know. The safety car is out. We are in fact going to pit. It's out on lap 7. So we're going to pit for the hards. And we're going to see how far we can take those white wall tyres. And here is a replay of it. Pete Gasly, he comes across me in my opinion. And is so slow through the exit of that corner. We tap the back of him. And we kind of basically pushed him round that corner. This is my view here. Just there you see him come across. I'm still up your inside, mate. You can't come across like that. But let me know what you think in the comments below. This is another view of it. You can see he's starting to come across. Yes, you could say I'm, I'm, I should back out of it. But I come on there. I can't really do much about that one. But this is something I probably wouldn't normally show you. But you can see here that everyone's kind of... When Pierre Gasly spun originally, everyone was just all over the place, you can see there. And just trying to get out of the way, there were cars reversing, trying to get round him, it was all chaos. But, let me know what you think about the incident in the comments down below. Was it my fault? Was it Gasly's fault? Or, was it a racing incident? I'll be, I'll be kind of glad to see your opinions on it, to be honest, to see, to have a discussion in the comments. But we're going to come out, like I said a minute ago, we're going to go to the hards. We're going to see how far these tyres can go. Safety cars in, Lance Stroll out of 
anyone is leading us round then to start to restart the race here in Barcelona a race which at the time of recording this is actually the Spanish Grand Prix this weekend but Lance Stroll gets going then in this race he hasn't pitted that's why he is leading the race to everyone behind him that is in a legit position you think about right at the start he was in front of us so he's doing pretty well but we're going to have to defend now we're in P14 but a lot of the cars around us do need to pit again and of course we don't but depending on how far these tyres can go so we've got to take them 25 laps to the end from lap 8 when we first got onto them obviously now it's only 20 laps so we'll just see we're actually caught back up to the pack in front of us because Guan Yu Zhou our teammate is actually holding everyone up and actually something I haven't mentioned is I've got a new helmet for this weekend I got it in the um, the podium pass you can see it there new helmet looks a lot better than the old one but going through the first corners now into the second um, the last chicane sorry round the final corner and to be honest it was kind of annoying I couldn't get to that bit to try and get past Carlos Sainz but he here is just going to absolutely blitz Guan Yu Zhou like he did to us a few laps prior which Guan Yu Zhou locks up we tried to go around the outside but this is where we need a, te a team orders button because he was holding me up the whole lap Guan Yu Zhou I couldn't get past him but through the chicane you see he does unleash us and we are now going to be able to get the power down and get on with our race we're into P5 this is a legit P5 11 laps to go those behind us well I say a legit P5 we have Albon and Norris behind us who are much quicker Albon as you can see here it's literally going to blitz us I, there's not even any point trying to fight this move down the inside he goes into turn one not really much point fighting but now Lando Norris on the back of us now and he he's going to think about it into turn four I go defensive to the outside and we do actually defend Lando Norris there and keep that position but it's only going to be a matter of the time in fact it is only one lap later I think and here comes Lando Norris same place same move but this time he's really gonna squeeze us right to the edge of the track that I weren't really happy about at the time but looking back on it fair play Lando so after Lando got past me I was just kind of gap watching in a way just kind of watching it you can see there in the top left just it's staying just under eight seconds and and Giovinazzi is behind us he's got science he's much quicker he's actually battling him but this is actually Carlos science now right on the back of Giovinazzi he's, he's he's been getting to that point where he can't move but this time he is going to go for a move around the outside of the young Italian now has the outside line again he had the inside line but he's going to sail around the outside and he does get that move done in P8 and now he's hunting after us is the McLaren driver and now this is where we have to severely watch the tyres manage those tyres the tyres still felt alright to be honest around this point but this is where we have to manage the gap you can see here the gap lap after lap after lap after lap it was just shrinking so quickly and on lap 31 right at the end of lap 31 Carlos Sainz catches us going on to lap 32 two laps left he's too far back here so by the time we come round again to go into the final lap Carlos Sainz will be close enough to make a move coming into the final chicane Carlos Sainz is pretty much going to have one maybe two chances to overtake us this is going to be the one big one though heading down onto the final lap Carlos Sainz pulls out to the outside we go defensive to the inside we're now 
Carlos Sainz tries to go around the outside, we squeeze him out, we're not letting him pass. This is the first time we are in a position to score points. We got very, very close last time out at the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. We came P11, but this time we're in P7. One more attempt for Carlos Sainz at the second DRS sign, we just plonked the car right in the middle of the track. We're not giving the Spaniard any chance of getting past us. Valtteri Bottas has won the Grand Prix, but I don't really care about that. As we come into the final sector, we do the chicane for the very final time, the 33rd time round the final corner, and we have got our first points as Brown GP. That's the end of the race, we'll see you in part for me. Jeff, as ever, is ecstatic about us getting points. But we didn't get drive of the day, somehow Esteban Ocon did, fair play. But wow, we finally got points. Another Spanish Grand Prix is over, and what a special race it was. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. I'm sorry, can we just go back to my guy there looking very depressed as he just got points. We'll look at the result in a second. Just look at him, he looks so annoyed that we just got points. What, what are you doing? Just yes lads, it, was, it really wasn't a good race. We got points for the very first time. I'm really, really not happy about that. You know, we should have won the race. I don't know what he's thinking, but Jesus. We did well. We did very, very well in that race. The tyres... We took them 25 laps. Anyway, to be honest, the last four or five laps, they really hit the, cl they hit the cliff and they really were struggling. But at the end of the day, we did it. And wow, what a strategy what it was. P18 to P7. Valtteri Bottas, I mentioned, won the race. We are now up to 14th in the, in the driver's standards. We actually jump Carlos Sainz, which Carlos Sainz will be feeling very bitter after that just by a single point as well so that that move at turn one really did cost a lot to Carlos Sainz we actually go ahead of Haas and Williams as well we were already ahead of Williams after the Dutch Grand Prix so we have just jumped Haas there we're now four points clear and the next ones at the road are Renault with 22, but that's, that's too much to think about at the minute. But back into the HQ now, you can see our rivalry with George Russell, and we have pretty much won this rivalry now, let's be honest, 23 to 9. It's pretty much done dusted and give us the gold medal. We're now very close to... to um, a, a claim seven i believe it is that's level seven yep that's the word i'm looking for we do get both gold bonuses as well no damage this time like it was in the dutch grand prix very very juicy indeed 100k and we're just shy of five million pounds at 4.8 but now it's time to renew our sponsor so but to be honest, after thinking about it, I looked at all of them, and my thinking was, don't broke what don't don't break what's not broken. That's definitely not the saying. But you know what I'm saying. So I've gone with exactly the same one again, just because we've been doing the objective for it. It's good money, so we might as well just stick with it. We're going to do some events, some some um. 
activities for the team before the next race in Monaco. We're going to be doing a aero, aero upgrade and a driver sponsor. That's the word as well. So we're going to skip on to Monaco. But guys, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to see more, I will see you in Monte Carlo. Goodbye.